Hello, that's the photograph that I used to start this painting. March 2022 and it's now 2024 and I've looked for the video and I can't find it. I know I used Color Art Colors and I'm sure that there was some Orange Crush and some Saffron Prism Pours and probably some uh, Wild Orchid too. But I'm going to put this photograph over here on a piece of tape and I'm going to use some more colors to, to finish doing what I started mostly. I've got some primary elements violet interference that I'm going to use if I can. I just added some... What is the name of that stuff? I need to know. It's art fluid. And I should show you that. Art fluid ex acrylic extender. So it'll loosen up a heavy mix. want some of this now. I'm willing to use it almost everywhere. And then I've got some purely pigments mixed up that look to be a pretty good color. I use black plum. And I may pick up some of the color on my spatula if I'm lucky. And move it to a few other places. I gotta loosen up my, I, there's grit on my canvas and I'm not sure where it came from. can hear it too. My spatula was clean, I swear. I don't know what this is going to look like, but I'm looking forward to finding out. I'm going to try and erase any little drag marks that appear that I think are from the scraping sound I'm hearing. I think I might want a little bit more of that and to clean off that edge. And where this big bright orange spot is, I'm planning on putting some white over it because I want that to look like the sun shining through the trees. And I can scrape things away. Maybe that means I can add some more. I like the idea of scraping things away and then adding more because I can always smooth out the edge afterwards. That was wrong. <laughs> but skies are unpredictable at best. I just don't want any spatula marks in particular other than the, the long graceful All right, so that's that's all right. I've got um, mellow yellow with a little bit of hollyberry in it, and I want some more of that. And I think I'm going to clean off my spatula because I don't think purple and yellow are going to mix well. They might, but I don't know that for a fact. Now, do I put some orange with it? I am. I'm going to put some orange with it. Actually, the orange I just mixed up is perfect. And it is more mellow yellow with papaya and sunset. Um, I'm trying to think of the other word in the sunset, but it's a prism. It's a, excuse me, it's a purely pigment. No cat hairs allowed. Try and take a take a page from what I just did up above and move the colors and then smooth them out. 
I might have to let this dry and come back. I don't want a hard edge though. Kind of like that. Not sure what to do with all the color I take away. I want to scrape through and leave some of the stuff that I had before I started. Like that. I think I'm going to have to wipe some off to tell you the truth. Yeah, that was a good one to remove. I think I want some brighter orange and I've got some vivid intense paroli orange. things the way I think they're said and I'm never sure if I'm right or not. I'm going to grab a little more. There's that burr again. I like that with the exception of wanting some Miami magenta in the bottom and I shouldn't, I really shouldn't, I should stop myself now. I think that's going to have to be good enough. Take that orange off. Try not to leave any marks. All right, so do I try the white now? The spot here isn't exactly in the same location. I had a little bit at the bottom too. Just a little bit. Just, just to test the water. I got a salmon swimming in my sky. Let's flood it with some yellow. Eighteen by twenty-four inch canvases are a little challenging. Do I want to do the same thing up above? Am I ready? kind of like it better than it was. I want to do it, but I don't, I want to be really cautious. I think that might call for, weirdly enough, a little bit of frosted berry. Just because I want to mute the white out. I know that might sound funny. That's a lot of white. That's a lot of everything. I have to get rid of some of that paint. Definitely wipe the yellow away. Either that or grab a new spatula. And I've got some yellow around that, strangely enough. I'm going to put the orange in there. All right, <laughs> I'm nervous. I should be, I think, too.
don't usually use wiping things away as part of my process, but in this case, I think it's important. I want something brighter. I've got Orange Crush. It might be too bright. I've got Sour Lemon with Holly Berry, both prison pours. Probably too much of both. I kind of like that. No, it's trial and error. Somebody's like, she doesn't know what she's doing. No, I don't. I try and learn as I go. Fly by the seat of my pants. And there's a I saw a sweater fuzz or a cat fur, I'm not sure. Cat hair. But I do feel like I've come closer to the way I was expecting it to look. And I'm not going to go back and add any... I do like this. I'm not going to waste any paint. The purple and orange didn't mix, that's good. I can't even believe it. We didn't make brown. All right, that's it for right now. I'm gonna come back. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so it's been a couple days and I'm out of excuses and this is what we're after right there, that photograph. Hopefully you saw it. And I'm sorry I'm a little out of frame. Well, it doesn't all fit. It's an 18 by 24, what can I say? So what I've done is I've taken some sidewalk chalk and I've drawn, I've drawn basically what I, what I would like to see. And I'll use that as a, uh, as an inspiration piece. And I'll put that, as soon as I stop catching on the turntable, I'll put that at the back. And I've realized the reason I've, reason I've been procrastinating so long is I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I could do it with a brush, no problem, and probably should, but I'm not. So I'm going to try, you know what, first I'm going to try to find the brush that I got ready for this. And it's right there, so that's a good thing. And it's nice and dry, and it's as clean as I could make it after letting it get too stiff. I have one of these little needle tip bottles, and yesterday when I tested it, or the day before, it worked. So I want to try it in the least conspicuous place possible. And see how that works for a thin line, and what happens when I use the chalk. So I'm just going to use the brush. It's not very dark because the brush probably has some moisture left in it, but it means that I could put something over the top of it. So I'm going to try that with the Meaden, with the big bottle. I don't think the brush is the right tool and I really am dying to try. That's got to stop happening. Okay, that'll that'll be me needing to lose 10 or 20 pounds. I'm going to use a tongue depressor piece. And see if I can make something of a solid black line out of that. And if I get going and it's working, I'm probably going to be silent and get rid of the soundtrack and fast forward. Oh, did I just dump it over? I did. Come back here, little bottle. Let's get that out of the way. So far, 
My favorite method is the one that's working. And what I was thinking was I was going to put some paint into a, a reservoir, which in this case is something from a panini machine or some kind of kitchen press that caught fat. And uh, I lined it with press and seal. But I haven't done that yet, and so far I'm thinking I'm not that unhappy with what I've got. I'll leave that right over the edge with my finger right now. And I can always fill it in later. It is kind of heavy along that edge, which probably isn't ultimately a problem. I do have another smaller bottle of black somewhere here. And unfortunately, it's the same size bottle I used as uh, for Amsterdam black cell activator. So I'm just going to try a smaller bottle tip and probably the same exact tool. I'm going to worry about my edges at some future point. Not this moment. So part of me just wants to put paint on and go to town. But I'm thinking I shouldn't do too many all at once. And I definitely don't want them to be all the same size. I'm not sure how that's going to work. And of course tomorrow, or when everything is dry, I can certainly get rid of the... I can cer That was my head. And tomorrow when everything is dry, I can get rid of the, um, the chalk marks. Yeah, I'm really sorry about my head. I can't seem to get the whole canvas in. and keep myself out of the way. So with any luck at all, I'll just edit out my head. So if you don't see my head, and I'm talking about my head being in the way, that's what happened. I'm thinking that I need to just start by getting the basic branches in the way, or put down on the canvas, rather. And it doesn't seem nearly as intimidating now as it did for the last two years. Well, this is bound to be easier than dipping in. I'm stopping short of my mark because I'm assuming that my tongue depressor will make up the gap. Who knows how many marks I really want to put in. And any little lumps and bumps along the way will definitely seem like buds. Because everything's in silhouette. And I could probably just leave the black lines if I wanted to. I can pretty sure I can come back and add more. I know I can add more, but what I'm thinking is I could thicken up things that I think need to be have some bulk added to them. I 
at a later date. This is Mead and Black acrylic paint, by the way, which is still the blackest black I know of. And I've got Q-tips someplace handy. So if I get fussy and I want to remove something, I can still do that. It looks like there's a lump in there that needs to go. And that's why I had that incursion. Black is always very forgiving because so you can just add more. I think I'm going to use a shorter piece of tongue depressor for the for the curve. I think that makes me think is I need to widen out the one that's below it to make it copacetic. So I can't tell you what's going to happen other than the fact that I'm not going to make you watch as I fast forward through everything because I don't think I can do this all at once. And I probably won't record every last movement I make. I am taking the paint that's heaviest and using it. And I'm not sure I'm going to mind having gaps in the marks. And I may go back in and put little buds in things afterwards too. That's what I'm thinking as I'm looking at all this. I've got some much shorter pieces of tongue depressor if I want. And I think that there's a lot more that I want to put in if I'm going to follow the picture at all, which is a question I have yet to t answer to myself. But it's an interesting start. And I guess I learned a few things. A, to keep my head out of the way. Actually, if I had learned that, it wouldn't be in the way anymore. So I guess I haven't learned that. And definitely, where are my shorter pieces? I should show you them. I have a little container full of much shorter pieces one of which is going to come in handy right now. And I know that I can touch up any little scrapes 
I have in the finish that showed the painting through, but do I really want to? That's the question. It's pretty cool right now. Let me take that short piece and the cat hair removal teams first. My first spot I picked was on the stretcher bar that's on the back that supports the canvas frame. I think it might be break time. I threw a yard sale a couple weekends ago and I carried some heavy stuff and I kind of hurt myself. So I'm still recovering. And standing is not as easy as it was 10 years ago. So I'm going to I'm going to just keep adding more paint and more branches and I will see you in a while when it's done and then I'll talk to you again. There, that's how far I've gotten at the moment. That's a progress report. I expect to do a lot more but um, I'm not unhappy with it. But it took a long time and I suspect it'll take a couple hours to finish. So I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so this is the next day and uh, it's dry and I took another hour after I turned the recording off and put in some black lines, most of which I think are fine and I like. And I learned a few things about not having to be a perfectionist and using a Q-tip to clean up. And I decided that I would take my photograph, which I could show you again, and pick my favorite crisscrosses or branches and put those in. I don't know if I'll ever get all the branches in that are in the original photograph. I don't expect that I, I will need to to get the effect I'm looking for. But I definitely just decided to take the ones that I found the most appealing and add them in here, there, and everywhere. And uh, so what I'm going to do is put thick black lines down on the thicker branches and use the tongue depressors again to fill in. And I'll come back when I'm done uh, as best I can. See you in a sec. Okay, so I started without you and I decided to add some buds. First, I found the still wet parts and found I, I can just pull out and create those little tiny branches that I, that I really was a, desirous of. And then I figured out immediately thereafter that I could just add a dollop of paint to a little pan and I can put either a drop down next to a branch and pull it out or I can find one of those little branches that I've already made and put a dot on and I'm probably going to put a lot more dots on 
and I don't think I'm going to make you wait through that, but I thought I'd show you quickly. And it doesn't really matter since it's black, if a bud is already burst into become a leaf, then the odd shape that you make by accident will become the correct shape because it's in silhouette. Anyway, so enough of that for right now. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've tried to move the canvas so that you can see most of it by taking my turntable away. And um, I'm not saying I'm completely 100% done with this because there are places that I see every once in a while that make me want to add some more black. But I wanted to make sure to tell you that in the end, using my paintbrush tip dipped into things and put down and pulled out served a vast purpose for finishing this as much as it's finished. Um, also, I'm sorry that there is no first part of this. I used a, a Hoxha omelet turning flip and fold spatula to add colors and I will try and guess some of them. But um, you saw me add some colors to those colors so that should be helpful. Please give me a thumbs up. If you like what I do, please share it. But mostly watch as much of it as you possibly can because that's the one thing that speaks to the YouTube algorithm. My paint pouring recipes are below. Show more. My email address is EASPB on the word gallery spelled out at gmail.com. For more, please subscribe. That would be appreciated. Uh, on, on my link tree, you'll find Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter links, and a couple of websites. I want to say thank you to my members who are keeping my channel alive currently and uh, thank you to anybody who makes a donation through PayPal or Patreon. It helps me purchase art supplies. Uh, my Amazon link is on the link tree and you'll find my two books there because I can and unlimited possibilities. They're the first in the hundred, second hundred videos I made for YouTube about paint pouring. Um, anything else? <laughs> I do sell my artwork and uh, I give lessons at the house in Spring Hill, Florida. Please use my email address to uh, contact me regarding either one of those things. This is very impressionist as far as I'm concerned, so uh, I learned to accept some of the mark making as charming that wasn't perfectly photographic and I think that's the right way to go. I had a little chalk on here, I took most of it off, but I still have some wet spots and uh, I love you guys. <laughs> take care of each other, take care of yourselves. I'll say goodbye for now and uh, hope to see you at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Team? <laughs> Standard team, yeah. Standard time. Um, tomorrow you can check out my community board to see whether I've posted tomorrow's video there or not. Usually sometimes it takes me until late at night to decide what's going to happen. But um, no, I love you guys and you inspire me always and I appreciate your comments endlessly. You keep my morale boosted. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now. I love you all. Priscilla out.